An update on a case we've been following all year. The case of a Carroll County mother fighting for custody of her kids heard in the Virginia Supreme Court. 10 News anchor Jenna Zipton is working for you, breaking down what happened in the courtroom. I regret to say that in Carroll County, the crisis is real. Just one of the statements John Kohler made in front of a Virginia Supreme Court panel. He's representing Angie Key as she continues to fight for her three children who went into foster care four years ago. As we've reported, the Carroll County Department of Social Services has been under investigation for violating Virginia laws, rules and policies meant to protect children and families. Something Kohler brought up in his argument as the state agency tasked with investigating complaints involving children in foster care investigated Angie's case. Services required under the statute were not delivered in this case, despite the testimony of the director that they were. If the Office of Children's Ombuds is found, no, they were not. How could that not affect the judge's decision? Because the department has the burden to show that services were delivered. If services are not properly delivered, are not fully delivered, then how can we say a parent was at fault for not complying with them? After the investigation into Angie's case, the final report showed the lack of urgency or interest to achieve reunification, lack of meaningful visitation with the children, court records that contained incomplete and inaccurate information, and troubling internal policies. But that report was never allowed in court. Kohler hopes by appealing the decision in the Supreme Court, this will change the process for termination of parental rights and hold local Department of Social Services accountable. But this final chance to get her kids back, denied by the Supreme Court. They recognized that uh, because of certain timing aspects of it, it probably wasn't the best case to review what the Office of Children's Ombudsman uh, is meant to do. So I remain hopeful that we will eventually have a case where the all of the pieces fit together and we can have a definitive ruling from the Supreme Court. So obviously Angie doesn't get her children back now. This is the end of the road. Unfortunately, yes. This has always been understood that we were fighting a difficult fight. But I am pleased to say that it has raised awareness of this issue. The main problem here was that the case had already reached a decision before we tried to have this information, this evidence brought into the case. We caught up with Angie after the ruling. Severe sadness and grief that they wouldn't just hear it. They, there's, no, there's not going to be a chance for them to just hear it, to know that we was telling the truth the whole time, that they did, they did wrong and they, there was corruption and I did everything right. And I should have gotten my children back. Although her case may be over, she's hoping this will change things for others. I'm praying that the ombudsman's office will get more power and be able to step in more and that the courts will have to hear this evidence, these investigations, and other families will reap the benefits. Kohler says Angie understood the odds were stacked against her, but continued fighting for her kids and other families. She knew that other people were experiencing the same difficulties, having the same issues in getting proper services. And she wanted to advocate for them. And I think that was extremely brave of her. I think it makes her a hero, in a sense, even though, even though her pain is not relieved. She is giving hope to others. Ultimately, he says the Virginia legislature needs to make changes to help in situations like this. I reached out to the director of the Carroll County Department of Social Services, who told me they can't comment on specific cases. Jenna Zibton, 10 News, working for you.